I am the stimulus. And what happens in our body is that we have receptors that will receive this stimulus. And this stimulus, as you know, will be transformed, transduced into an electrical signal. Because our body communicates with electrical signals and chemical signals. That's it. So this stimulus is converted to an electrical signal. Now, when the electrical signal is flowing through the nerve, the neuron, we call that specific electrical signal a nerve impulse. Yes? But we can also say electrical signal or action potential. When we look at neurons, they are very long. That's why we call them fibers. And then we have neurons that are myelinated and unmyelinated. When we are looking at unmyelinated neuron, what will happen to the electrical signal? It will pass to the entire neuron. Do you see that? How efficient is that? Not really. But when we have myelinated neurons, what happens is that segments of the neural fiber will get wrapped around, and then the electrical signal will skip, and now you throw to, yeah, skip parts of the neuron. Do you see that? Much faster. And that's the reason why myelinated neurons have a faster conduction velocity than unmyelinated neurons. Now, we have a problem because we get to the end of the neuron, and in the end of the neuron, we have what we call terminal button. And within the terminal button, we have vesicles that have neurotransmitters. Why would it be important to have vesicles with neurotransmitters inside of a terminal button? It is important because we cannot have a neuron touching another neuron. So you have a gap between them. And the only way this electrical signal, this information will be able to pass from one neuron to the other neuron is by having something that's capable of crossing a gap. And what will cross the gap is the neurotransmitter. So the neurotransmitter is kept within vesicles inside of the terminal button of the neuron that is before the neuron that basically received the stimulus. And then when this neurotransmitter is released, it will then go to the space you have between this neuron and the following excitable cell that will receive the stimulus. So the information was transferred from the pre to the post cell. Does that make sense so far? Now, this electrical signal is literally a change in voltage that can only be done by excitable cells. And we know that, like us, even if you're very negative on the inside, we want to be in a positive environment. Isn't that true? And every single cell in our body wants to be in a positive environment and is negative on the inside. When these ions that are on the outside are capable to go into the cell, we have the depolarization of that cell. And this change in voltage is the electrical signal. And this will flow through the nerve fiber until it reaches the terminal button. Now, here we have the terminal button wall. Okay? Here. Here we go. I'm serious. We are doing this. Here, here, here we go. No, I don't want to put you facing the back the, like this. OK, where is my, my neurotransmitter? Come here, Derek. And oh, Derek already has two. Now, what will happen is here is the nerve, the terminal button. So the electrical signal flew through the nerve fiber, and now it reached the terminal button. And something will cause the neurotransmitter that is within a vesicle, you see how beautiful the vesicle is? To be released into the gap that we have between two cells. Yes? This electrical signal is this change in voltage. And this change in voltage is only capable of opening a gate that can respond to a change in voltage. You cannot open a gate that can respond only to a change in voltage by, by putting a ligand to it. It will not fit. So since we had the electrical signal flowing through the nerve fiber, when this electrical signal reached the terminal button right here, we have in the wall of the terminal button my voltage. It has to be voltage gated calcium ion channels. Where is my voltage gated calcium ion channels? Here we go. You see this? 
in the terminal button wall. And then when this electrical signal reaches here the terminal button and reaches this voltage-gated calcium ion channel, do you know what will happen? It will electrocute this gate. <laughs> and will cause this gate to open because this gate opens to a change in voltage. And when the voltage-gated calcium ion channel opens, what will happen is calcium ions go in. You see that? Calcium ions go in. Now what happens is that when the calcium ions go in, you guys are my phospholipid bilayer. <laughs> when the calcium ions go in, the vesicle with the neurotransmitter that is inside of the terminal button fuses with the plasma membrane and releases it into the synaptic gap. You see? <laughs> now we have the neurotransmitter in the synaptic gap. And this neurotransmitter, when we are talking about a neuron transferring information to a muscle cell, this neurotransmitter is specifically the acetylcholine. Remember that? Now, this neurotransmitter is in the synaptic gap, you see? And then we have a muscle cell right next to it. And now you're my phospholipid bilayer, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. And this acetylcholine will find receptors in the muscle cell. And these receptors now, when the chemical binds, these receptor receive the ligand. So now this is a gate that has the receptors in it with the ligand. Now this gate opens. And when this gate opens, it transfers information from the nerve cell to the muscle cell. If this gate is opened because we have the ligand, this is now a ligand-gated channel because we have the ligand. And if this gate is open, we have the sodium ions going in. You see that? And if the sodium ions go in now in the skeletal muscle cell, what will happen? The skeletal muscle cell will depolarize. And then we have now an electrical signal that will cause the containers that we call terminal cistern within the skeletal muscle cell to open and release the calcium ions in the cytoplasm of the skeletal muscle cell. Does that make sense? Do you understand why we need to have electrical signals and chemical signals? Do you understand the difference between a voltage-gated channel and a ligand-gated channel? What is the only thing that can open a voltage-gated channel? A change in voltage, an electrical signal. What is the only thing that can open a ligand-gated channel? A ligand, a neurotransmitter, and that's it. So you have a ligand, a ligand opening the post cell. If this cell is a neuron, if this cell is a muscle cell, because that was how the information was transferred from the pre-cell to the post cell. Does that make sense? You need to know that. Thank you, guys. <laughs>